address your high lord. Hello everybody, welcome to Chairly Game, and I owe Jamaican Hopscotch Mafia an estimated wait time a huge apology because I messed up my cast times and I missed their game that I was scheduled to cast. So I'm going to message those guys direct, but if you guys happen to be in here at all, I'm, I'm so sorry guys, that never happens and it's completely unlike me, and I owe you guys a huge, huge apology. I am going to make sure that I make that up to you because that is not okay to uh, to miss that. So <sighs> completely my bad there. I feel really terrible about it actually. But we are here for our seven o'clock game. Um, people are getting into the lobby now. Uh, and this should be an interesting week. It's always an interesting week. It is season two of Hero League with Alarak and uh, Braxis Holdout available for Chair League. Uh, the team Big Damn Heroes did not select Braxis Holdout. We will be playing on Shrines. And right now we are just rounding everybody up. I am flying solo today. Uh, no partner in crime, so I get to hear my spe myself uh, speak a lot. I will do my best not to have extended periods of silence while I do the, um, you know, kind of technical stuff here. Uh, there were a number of changes this week, other than, of course, the new map and Alarak. Hamwich, Fatal, okay. Um, Vala had a lot of changes. Johanna had a change, some changes made. Butcher had a whole lot of changes made. Um, Falstad had some nerfs. Zagara had some nerfs. Um, and obviously, it's only been two days, so players haven't quite had the... Um, chance to make all of the adjustments with the changes to the heroes so it will be fun it's one of the you know kind of cool things about doing this is everybody has to learn together nobody's really at an advantage of uh, doing that so right now we're at nine out of ten waiting for one more there is our tenth Uh, so once again, if there is anybody from Jamaican Hopscotch Mafia, which is an incredible name, and estimated wait time in the lobby, I owe you guys a huge apology. I completely messed up my casting times, and I missed your game. Um, so you guys let me know. Reach out to me. I'm going to reach out to you directly through Chair League 2 because that's so unlike me, and I feel really terrible about it. Actually, I just completely messed up my times. All right, well, enough of that. Enough of me feeling like a jerk. In the meantime, we are going to get these uh, lobby out, draft links out. Oh, we need Fatal Destiny to get one more on the roster. So uh, while we're getting them to do that, um, we'll talk about some of the changes a little bit. Johanna got um, part of her Knight Takes On level 1 talent baked in. She gets the extra damage to mercenaries and minions, but she doesn't get the stun that allows her to take some of her other good talents at level 1 and kind of puts her in that role of um, wave-clearing tank that she was already in anyway, and it gives her more options at level 1 because 
pretty much everybody took that at level one with, with few exceptions. Um, Vala had a complete rework. That's, I think, still a little bit up in the air. Um, initially, the PTR reaction was pretty negative to that, um, and they buffed her auto attack damage, and now it seems to be okay. Um, I'm going to play her a little bit to see how that rolls. Uh, Nova has a bribe now that she gets stacked when killing people. I played a couple games of that. Um, I don't know if it'll be competitively viable because Nova doesn't really fit that, but for funsies games, it's a lot of fun. It gives you something else to do when you're not just headshotting people. Um, Butcher is really, really powerful right now. He got his trait changed to a quest, and once he gets his 125 meat, his giant cleaver glows gold, and he does a lot, a lot of damage. Uh, Falstad had his Q build nerfed, both the damage to the Q base and boomerang damage nerfed and well, as well. And he had his W build buffed and added a bribe talent to it as well. So now his W talent at level 1 increases the W by 5%. And also gives him bribe. Uh, Zagara had an auto attack nerf and basically all of her basic abilities. They were all very small nerfs, but they were because she's good and I think she'll still be really good. So it's uh, curious is kind of the Zagara Falstad we've been seeing largely banned out generally. Um, both got kind of little nerfs um, to kind of bring them in line with everyone else. And I think the hero pool is very, very close to being in a really great place with regard to um, balance and um, all heroes having uh, a role, which is of course um, gonna be harder and harder to do um, as more heroes are added to the game. So uh, Chair League, we're having a little bit of growing pains right now and uh, now I need to have, oh wait, um, Uh, there have been some changes to Chair League with this, um, making sure rostered players are added on and different things that didn't have to be done the last two seasons. So there's still um, some growing pains with that end. Um, we're running a couple minutes late because I was running a couple minutes late and one of the team was running a couple minutes late. And now we're hitting these little hiccups to get the game going. But it should be... Um, we should have draft links here. Like any, any minute. Oh, you know what? I can do it. Never mind. Okay, great. All right. Links going out. So now we're going to go ahead and go to the draft screen. Should be popping up here momentarily. All the links are out. Um, if anybody in the Twitch chats let me know how my volume is. I've been having some uh, audio issues. I want to make sure I'm coming in um, good. Just waiting for big damn heroes to hurry up. Um, both these teams are Division III. Um, they are both currently 1 and 0. Oh. Fatal Destiny, uh, their first season in Chair League was last season. Um, in Division 3, they went 4 and 5. Uh, Big Damn Heroes has been around since Season 1. In Season 1, they went uh, 2 and 4. And in Season 2, in Division 3, they went 7 and 5. So had a nice, solid, all-around season for Season 2. So um, maybe they have their sights, or for Division 3, maybe they have their sights set 
on uh, Division Two for this season. Big Damn Heroes, of course, led by uh, fellow co-caster Cowboy Kyle. Um, he uh, casted a couple of my brother's uh, games last year, so I watched him. He's very, very good. Good fun to watch. Solid caster. And Fatal Destiny. Um, this, you know, the meta still hasn't adjusted to the Alarak patch, so I do expect to see Zag banned. Now, Infernal Shrines, there's a lot of heroes that could be worthy of this ban. Falstad, uh, because he's just generally really good. Uh, Zul, because he can double soak lanes during the shrine phases. And Kerrigan, because it's her first map, she can essentially solo. Um, Li Ming, so I think the strategy with Big Damn Heroes is I just listed three heroes that are really good on this map. Fatal Destiny is now going to get one of them, and I expect Big Damn Heroes to get the other two. And I don't even talk about Sylvanas, who of course is good on this map because she adds to the push power of the Punishers. So I would expect to see uh, Zul, um, Falstad, or Kerrigan. There we go. So uh, the other one is going to come out here shortly. Any of those uh, would be solid. This is, in my opinion, Kerrigan's uh, best map. You just, you know, kind of at the pro high competitive level, you just they just ban her out. This is, I think, maybe Johanna's best map too, or one of them, because uh, um, if she goes Eternal Retaliation at four, she can significantly contribute to the shrine clearing and really clearing out those little shrine guardians uh, for the Punisher phases. So Johanna, uh, an excellent selection. Um, so the front line for Big Damn Heroes already set with uh, Melee Assassin and Kerrigan and their tank in Johanna. Fatal Destiny now on the clock. Uh, there is Rhaegar. Um, I think he's the best healer on this map if he goes uh, Lightning Bond. I think it's called at level 1, where he gets his Lightning Shield on himself and on an ally. It can help contribute to the Shrine Guardians, and he's just a good healer. That's an excellent selection. Falstad still on the board. Zul is still on the board. Um, a number of different options here for Fatal Destiny. And there's the Falstad. He's, he's just good. He has good burst damage. Um, after he hits Boomerang at 7, his wave clear is solid. Um, he, the global is great. The gust, if you use it right, offensively, defensively, really good. Uh, ETC, the mosh pit can be annoying. He's just His kit is really good too. One of the best tanks in the game. So there's the ban from Big Damn Hero. Since they already have the Johanna, they just don't want to deal with the ETC. Fatal Destiny now on the clock. I would expect to see a healer ban since they've already selected theirs. Maybe Uther, keep Uther and, and his Divine Shield away from Kerrigan. Because um, if Kerrigan dives in really aggressively and pops her ultimate um, with the Divine Shield on top of it, um, she gets really, really difficult to deal with. So uh, an Uther ban wouldn't surprise me. Or, uh, or Tyrael for the same reason, although they do have Johanna already. Um, and a Jaina ban. Jaina's a good zoning uh, mage. It has high burst damage potential. Also, uh, Wombo Combo setup on the Ring of Frost. Uh, I think she's in a solid place right now, but the ban does surprise me a little bit. Um, one of the fun things about casting a chair league, um, especially like placement and Division 3 games, um, some of the Division 3 teams are really, really casual and just kind of come in here and have a good time, which is great um, because there's a place for everybody in Share League, but also uh, because you just don't know what you're going to see. You're going to see all these different things. And also, uh, you know, unlike high-level competitive where the teams know each other and you have targeted bands, that's pretty unusual um, in this, you know, kind of lower, more casual competitive setting. Kael'thas selected for Big Damn Heroes. Uh, he's been nerfed a million times and reworked, and now he's settled in where he's at, which is, I think, kind of a middle-of-the-pack damage dealer. He's solid. Living Bomb is great. He has a stun in his kit. Uh, he does lack mobility, though, uh, so he needs to be very careful. And Fatal Destiny right now, one of the things I'll say about their team, it is mobile. Sylvanas is a fairly mobile uh, hero. Uh, Rhaegar is, of course, with his wolf form, a mobile assassin. Falstad is exceedingly mobile. And there's the healer selection, the Uther to pair with a Kerrigan. So that is something that Fatal Destiny really needs to be aware of, is the Divine Shield onto the diving Kerrigan. Last two picks for Fatal Destiny. They are obviously going to pick a tank. I would imagine a second frontliner is also in the works. So maybe you'll see something like a Muradin Sonya. 
Murden Thrall, um, Murden Zul even. Arthas is also a possibility as well. Um, maybe Leoric for the wave clear. Both these teams so far kind of stick into a standard team building uh, composition. You know, a couple frontliners, a couple backliners, and a healer. So there's Tyrael. So I think that's going to be their answer to Kerrigan's dive if she gets Divine Shielded and dives in. Tyrael can pop his Sanctification to nullify that um, and prevent her from going ham. So Tyrael's a good hero, a little more late game because his kit uh, really comes together once he gets Holy Ground. Um, he gives shields and speed and teleportation, and there's the Thrall. So like I expected, double frontliners from Fatal Destiny to round out their comp. Tyrael Thrall on the front line, Sylvanas and Falstad to do the damage, and Rhaegar for the heals. And I would expect um, some kind of ranged specialist or ranged damage dealer uh, for big damn heroes. A lot of options still on the board. Um, they could go triple melee, I suppose, if they wanted. Sonia's really good on the shrines. I don't think they'll go that way. I would expect, like, maybe a Vala or a Lunara uh, is excellent on this map, and her damage over time can be really backbreaking for the other team. Um, so maybe that's what I expect to see. Some kind of auto-attacking ranged damage dealer. Rainer, Vala, Lunara, all good choices. They'll complement the ability damage of Kael'thas. And instead, they opt to go double support Tassadar for the vision. He's pretty good in a lane gives respectable wave clear, and that's really all in on that Kerrigan. They're going to babysit her and really attempt to enable her to dive in to the enemy team. So our draft is done, and we will be heading into game in just a second. Just waiting for uh, all 10 players to uh, ready up and uh, of course um, <laughs> of course the most important part of any chair league game is not the game or the draft or the wins or losses it's the pre-game fashion show and bounce Victory synergy for the forsaken competition so uh, I think both teams are looking to uh, synergize that kind of stuff it's always fun to see what skins people will bust out so just waiting for some uh, some ready-ups here. I really like both teams' drafts for different reasons. Um, and I'll, I'll be curious to see which way um, it goes. Um, and both comps kind of come together after 10. I, don't, I think maybe um, Big Damn Heroes will have the slight early game advantage um, with uh, Johanna Stun and uh, Kerrigan combo and ETC and Uther stun. So the pickoff potential is there, but none of the heroes on Fatal, I'm sorry, yeah, Fatal Destiny are particularly easy to pick off. They're all fairly mobile. Um, none of them are really slow movers. Actually, the only really two kind of plotting heroes are uh, Uther and Kael'thas and Johanna, I guess, but she's got the uh, indestructible. I think the sound is up a little bit too high. Alright. So let's get onto the correct screen here. And correct my team names. All right, so the blue team is uh, Fatal Destiny. We have Dementia on Tyrael, Womack on Thrall, Jelly Monster on Falstad, Hamwich on Sylvanas, and E2, E2 Brandon <laughs> on Rhaegar. For the red team, Big Damn Heroes, Cowboy Kyle on Kael'thas, Jalice, I'm gonna say Jalice on Kerrigan, Belias on Johanna, Wana to seven on Uther and Good Doctor on Tassadar. A 
of course, if Falstad opts to go the Q build um, here, which I assume people are still going to go until I see otherwise. I did mess around with the W build. I think it's, um, I think it's inspired. There's much less burst and a much less sustaining. And there we go. Look at the mount synergy I was talking about. Big damn heroes, I think, just won the fashion show. But let's go check. Yep. The fashion show win goes to big damn heroes for sure. Anyway, so if Jelly Monster on Falstad goes the Q build, which I assume he will, let's check it out. Yep. He wants to fly to the mid. They want this little 5 on 5 because you can get some some nice stacks of Q. Um to build up in that little middle 5 on 5. So I assume that they'll take it for that reason. They do need to be careful because big damn heroes have more stuns and pickoff potential. And four members of big damn heroes going to the mid. And Fatal Destiny being very careful. They know about all the stuns and they care again in the Uther. Tacit are coming from the bottom. I assume Vision will come out here shortly. There it is. The positions of Fatal Destiny have been revealed. And here's our 5 on 5 show. Yes, yeah, takes a lot of damage, forced to fall back. Game sounds really loud. I thought so too. I thought I already adjusted that. I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's go down to here. Matt, let me know how that is. All right, so we have the four-man rotation from Fatal Destiny. And Thrall is left uh, by himself in the top lane where he is currently dealing with Uther and Kerrigan. Um, if they have to leave two people in the top lane, big game heroes, this four-man rotation is going get, to get its mileage out of it. So they're basically kind of trading two for one. Thanks, Matt, for letting me know. So big game heroes is opting for a 2-2-1. Two, two, Tassadar is a solo laner. While Fatal Destiny is opting to leave Thrall as a solo lane with a four-man rotation on the other heroes. So, Johanna, of course, is probably not going to get picked off, although Telios goes really far forward. You need to be careful that you know they're doing a four-man, so there really wasn't any reason to be that far forward. And now the first shrine will be top lane. It's curious, they're going to leave Falstad bottom to split soak, and then he will fly up shortly. Still too loud? Okay, we'll make one more adjustment on it. Okay, let me know how that is, Matt. <laughs> Fatal Destiny aggressively zoning out in the lane, and wow, that is a ton of damage on Thrall. He is forced to withdraw, as is his orc brother, Rhaegar. Living Bomb doing work, exploding on a three people. Rhaegar is certainly going to fall. You know, I, I don't mind the aggressive zone out. Thrall's going to go down here. Two or not, great shields by Tyrael to keep him alive. They chose to leave Falstad down to split soak and then aggressively took a four on five. I kind of would prefer them to do one or the other. If you're going to go four on five in the shrine, you really can't be that aggressive with it because you're going to be going into a five on four. So right now, Big Damn Heroes is controlling the shrines and Falstad is bouncing between bid, between mid and bot, trying to get the split soak advantage. It's a really good strategy. You can get an early level lead by doing that, but that is negated if you lose heroes in the top lane. So this top four from Fatal Destiny wants to stall this out as much as possible so Falstad can get that experience lead. Now Falstad flying up. It's going to be too late. Big Damn Heroes has just got the first Punisher of the game. It is a Frozen Punisher. And let's see how both teams handled it. Currently, all five members on both teams still in lane. Punisher dives in. There's no wall to uh, to bait the Punisher over because of the double push. Tassadar is rotating the mid to get a soak advantage. Fatal Destiny burning the frozen Punisher down very quickly, and there it will fall. Falstad picked up a ton of Q stacks with that hammering right there, and. The split soak didn't work out there for Fatal Destiny. Currently, Big Damn Hero sitting um, about a quarter level up. It's it's not a big advantage. Um, still a very close game. They did manage to get a wall and a little bit of damage onto the fort. And now they rotated directly onto their bruiser camps, try to continue to put more pressure on the top lane. Neither team has anybody accounting for the mid lane right now. And Uther and Tyrael, uh, that is a whole lot of no damage as these two guys whack at each other. 
currently going at it in the top lane. Kael'thas is rotating up, and Tyrael needs to be careful. Living Bomb out, Stun out. There's the Hammer of Justice and the uh, Q. Will the Living Bomb finish him off? Not quite, but Tyrael has to retreat. He will hurt back, leaving nobody in the top lane to defend from Fatal Destiny from Uther and Kael'thas' push with the Mercs and also eliminating Fatal Destiny's push. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, Fatal Destiny has taken the neutral bottom lane Merc Cap. Tassadar is here by himself against three members of Fatal Destiny and Mercs, but they rotate up. Kerrigan coming down to reinforce, and Tassadar will slowly plunk down these Mercs. Kerrigan is going to help. Johanna is really far forward again. It looks like Falstad was picked off in the top lane, probably the stuns from Kael'thas and Uther. And now Tyrael is rotating up. They're really, uh, they being big damn heroes, are really bullying this top lane, forcing a response from Rhaegar and from Tyrael. Kael'thas and Uther will retreat. The second shrine of the game will be spawning in the mid lane. And it will be, let's see what kind of Punisher it will be. So it looks like big damn heroes will get here first. It looks like it's going to be a Mortar Punisher. In my opinion, probably the weakest one. Um, it, both teams, actually, I, I, I lied. I was mistaken. Fatal Destiny got here first as Big Damn Heroes wanted to tap to make sure everybody was at full health. The Shrine has been spawned, and we have a little skirmish here in the mid lane. Falstad gets caught in the Kerrigan combo and a Living Bomb, takes a lot of damage, and is forced to retreat. Johanna wreaking havoc in the front line, as is Uther with the stun. Currently, Fatal Dennis Destiny really getting bodied out of the bottom lane. They're all getting caught in the break from Kerrigan. The health bars are currently in Fatal Destiny's favor. Um, or I'm sorry, in Big Damn Hero's favor. Tyrael is very close to dying. Rhaegar has fallen to the Living Bomb. Tyrael will probably just get away. So uh, Uther is very low. He does manage to get back. Fatal Destiny needs to withdraw. They're already 5 on 4. That Living Bomb is going to kill some people, and he spreads it to his teammate. And, oh, Jelly Monster lives with 27 hit points. Three members of Fatal Destiny down. And definitely a miscommunication on the Living Bomb. Uh, that's not something you want to do. Big Damn Heroes, once again, controlling the Shrines. Um, they are low on mana, though, so I think if Fatal Destiny... Nope, not with level 10. I was going to say they could regroup and take this. Fatal Destiny needs to seed the Shrine and go soak, try to get to 10, and mitigate the damage done as much as possible. It looks like that's what they're doing. Falstad is in the bottom lane, split soaking. Thrall in the top lane. And the other three heroes looks like they will go to the mid lane uh, to defend this Punisher when it is captured by Big Damn Heroes, which will be momentarily. So ultimates for Big Damn Heroes, that's going to be Pyroblast for Kael'thas, um, a Maelstorm for Kerrigan, Blessed Shield for Johanna, Divine Shield for Uther, and Force Wall for Tassadar. There's the hard end gauge, the Kerrigan combo missed, but Big Damn here is very low. Uh, Rhaegar will is the first one to go down. Fatal Destiny needs to back off. They are at level 10 now. There goes the Punisher in on top. Kerrigan not quite close enough to follow up with the stun of her own, but Fatal Destiny definitely being forced back. Thrall taking a ton of damage, forced to retreat. Tyrael doing his best to hold the line, but they are definitely low. Wailing Arrow only hits Uther. There goes the Sanctification, the aggressive gust by Falstad blowing everybody into the tower range with no minions to tank it. Wow, that was an aggressive gust. They do get Johanna for their troubles. Uh, Kerrigan is low. Kael'thas is low. Uther is forced to try to tank to Peel, being the beefiest character left. What originally looked like it would be um, really trouble for Fatal Destiny, they managed to turn it around, get a kill, and are only one level down. So they did manage to make the best of what was initially a bad situation with a nice aggressive gust and a good use of sanctification. Let's go over Fatal Destiny's ultimates. We have Ancestral Healing on Rhaegar, Wailing Arrow on Sylvanas, Mighty Gust on Falstad, Sundering on Thrall, and Sanctification on Tyrael. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but I've been seeing a ton of Earthquake Thrall in my games lately. I'm not quite sure why that is, but a lot of them. Kerrigan doesn't realize she's in trouble. She's down here by herself. There's the danger ping from his teammates, and he will be a little more cautious and back up with three members in lane against him. In the meantime, Big Damn Heroes capture their top bruiser camp once again. 
and they're leaving two in the top lane and they are pseudo grouping as three in the bottom lane. I assume they're gonna try to make a play at this bruiser camp. Um, Fatal Destiny looks like they're a little bit indecisive and now they're going for the invade. Uh, Tassadar sniffs it out with the vision though. It's four on three right now. Now Kael'thas and Uther are rotating down. They're trying to get a pick on Kerrigan. She is taking some damage, but she wasn't far enough out for them to really take advantage of that. Falstad still trying to split soak in the top lane. I assume he will fly down momentarily. Phoenix goes down, stuns go down, Wall goes down. Three are hit by the Wailing Arrow, and Maelstorm is essentially wasted, but Thrall does fall, leaving a five on four advantage in favor of Big Game Heroes, and they also have the level 13 talent tier advantage. So once again, Fatal Destiny is left in a disadvantageous position and at least forced to see the early shrine until Thrall gets back up. I think they're doing a nice job of trying to at least get 13, but they will not be able to get 13 um, in time to contest this shrine. Currently 31 Shrine Guardians for Big Damn Heroes, and they will be capturing the first Arcane Punisher of the game in just a second. A good, smart play, leaving uh, this, their two heroes to capture the shrine while they go ahead and uh, hire some mercs as well. So they're going to have a merc push in mid lane, an arcane punisher in bot lane. Fatal Destiny is leaving Sylvanas to try to split push in the top and relieve some of that pressure. Currently, three, now four members uh, there from Fatal Destiny to defend against the arcane punisher. It is getting burnt down fast. Um, Partially because Tassadar and Kerrigan are in the top lane. They were trying to get a pick on Sylvanas, but she wisely backed up. So the Sylvanas split push worked out because it drew two heroes away and now giving them a five on four advantage. There is the Mighty Gust once again, isolating Uther, the Sundering to set it up as well. Living bombs are everywhere though. Sanctification came out almost just for the living bombs. So nice job by Cowboy Kyle putting out uh, damage, almost peeling with just damage. And there goes Uther in a tank mode again to stun for his teammate. Combined shield may be a bit unnecessary, but he wanted to ensure his teammate gets out alive. We still have a four on three in this bot lane. A lot of damage went out, some ultimates used, and nobody falls. Tassadar is now in the top lane. He's split pushing, Falstad flying up. Um, he'll get some damage on Tassadar, I'm sure. Uh, Tassadar, though, should not be getting picked off here. Um, and he's not. He flies away. Now we have Kerrigan in pursuit of Thrall with Maelstrom, and Kerrigan is able to pick off Thrall. Rhaegar just a hair late to save his orc brethren. Currently, Big Damn Heroes are up 9 kills to 2, up about 1 level, 15 to 14, and they are grouped in the middle, and now they are rotating top. Fatal Destiny, they have a group of 3 that's kind of isolated in that mid lane. I'm curious what they're going to do here. Now they're coming down. I don't think they realize it's four on three. Wailing Arrow only hits Kerrigan. She is taking a lot of damage. There's the gust from Tyrael. It is under the fort, but the fort has no life. There it goes. Kerrigan goes down. Living Bomb is out. Johanna goes down. Falstaff falls as well. Rhaegar running for his life. Kael'thas running for his life. Uther doing his best to peel for Kerrigan. I don't think it's going to be enough. There's the... Uh, uh, the Kael'thas' is Q to keep Sylvanas away, so a two for one in favor of Fatal Destiny right as the Shrine is spawning in the mid lane. This is a really good game. Uh, Big Damn Heroes controlling it mostly, um, but really close, really close. They have a small edge here. Um, it's going to teeter soon. Fatal Destiny opting not to push their numbers advantage. Instead, they're getting this top Merc camp to get pushed in the top lane while the shrine is going on. So some interesting strategic decisions. Uh, Big Damn Heroes opting to jump straight on the shrine despite their slight numbers disadvantage. And here comes Fatal Destiny, both teams at level 16, both teams at five on five. This fight, this shrine is gonna go a long way to determine which team is gonna take a lead going into the late game. There goes the Kerrigan dive. The Sundering is the engagement, Wailing Arrow, I'm sorry, not Wailing Arrow. The Blessed Shield gets two. There's the Gust to isolate Johanna. She goes down. Oh, I'm sorry, Thrall goes down. Falstead has to fly away on the life. There's the Sanctification really doing work on Tassadar and on Uther. This is a little bit of a scatter fight. Rhaegar is really isolated and in the middle of Big Damn Heroes. 
There are a lot of low health bars, but nobody quite seems to want to go down. Rhaegar is going to be close. He manages to wolf away, and both teams are going to back off and regroup. An excellent juke by Sylvanas, and with the second wave runner, she is probably going to get away or not. She tried to juke backwards. In the middle of all of that, though, in the background, Big Damn Heroes got the Frozen Punisher. They have Kerrigan down. Fatal Destiny has Sylvanas down with Thrall just spawning. So now we have the Punisher going at the first keep. This is going to be the first battle near a keep for this game. Frozen Punisher baited over the wall by Falstad. Not ideally who you want to do that, but he was able to get out of there. They're burning down the Punisher pretty quickly, but now the front wall is down, and this is going to get more difficult as Big Game Heroes is able to invade. The Phoenix goes down to zone. Tyrael's taking a lot of damage. Big Damn Heroes opts to back out, content with only taking out the keep wall. In the meantime, that Merc that they got in the beginning was able to help a little bit there because Tassadar was forced to take care of the Mercs and not be at that team fight. So it looks like Big Damn Heroes are going to get their own top lane Merc camps while Fatal Destiny is going to get theirs in the bottom. I think Fatal Destiny will probably rotate to the very bottom one. Um, Kerrigan is here. This is very, very dangerous for Kerrigan. She needs to get out of here. Falstad is like in a one-on-two on the top. Aggressive invasion from Fatal Destiny. However, I think Big Damn Heroes will be too late to do anything about it. So two Merc lanes captured for Fatal Destiny to only one for Big Damn Heroes. It looks like Big Damn Heroes is going to be content to take the top four. While Fatal Destiny, I, w I would have preferred with Sylve to just go after the Forge. You don't need the Mercs. And see, now it's a little late. They're disjointed. Sylve could very easily get picked off. That was an excellent, uh, excellent uh, haunting wave there. You know, I didn't note it before, but this is Kerrigan's uh, Queen of Ghosts skin, and it is really cool. Wailing Arrow goes down, Kerrigan falls, Uther is very low, throws the sun out, Sylvanas is disabling the fort, allowing the fight uh, to happen for Fatal Destiny. Now she got off it though, there, and back on. Four versus two. I'm surprised Big Damn Heroes isn't just giving this up. This is not a fight that they're going to win, but they're doing a nice job. Johanna and Uther are both pretty beefy, um, and they were able to kind of hang in there and dish out some damage. Big Damn Heroes destroyed Fatal Destiny's top lane first fort. Fatal Destiny responded in kind by eliminating their opponent's bottom lane fort. So here is the shrine appearing in the bottom lane, which is good for Fatal Destiny because there is no fort to, to defend this Punisher when it arrives. And Big Damn Heroes is going to have to choose whether they're... Oh, I'm sorry, those mercs are already dead. So we're going to have another even level, even tier, 5 on 5. The only issue here is Fatal Destiny doesn't have Wailing Arrow or Sundering, whereas Big Damn Heroes has all of their ultimates up and available for this team fight. Sanctification goes... Uh, there it is. Now Sanctification is up. Sundering is up. Just 9 seconds to Wailing Arrow. And I think Big Damn Heroes might be waiting for that. 4 seconds. 21 Shrine Guardians for Big Damn Heroes. And here comes Fatal Destiny, a 5-on-5. Five five. Johanna taking a lot of damage, but that's what she's supposed to do. Big Damn Heroes has been really, really laser-focused on these shrines throughout the whole game. That was the sanctification to counter Kerrigan, the Maelstrom that I talked about in the early game. It worked well, except for it didn't quite last long enough. Tyrael goes down. He is going to explode on everybody on the blue team, and look at their... Wow! That Tyrael Ghost does so much damage. Still, the Living Bomb did just as much work. Three members down for blue, only one down for red. And now they are going to have a Mortar Punisher pushing bottom lane with four heroes. Um, I think Fatal Destiny is just going to concede this. Both teams are still very equal in level, and this is absolutely still a game that could go either way. Both teams now are down to only their keeps but neither team has a keep down. So this game has kind of felt like Big Damn Heroes has controlled it, and the 15 kills to only seven for Fatal Destiny looks that way as well. But then you look up at the levels, you look up at the structures, and this game is absolutely dead even. Um, there is a little, uh, Big Damn Heroes does have two keep walls down. That's a small advantage on their end. 
um, but they're gonna opt not to push this again. They're leaving Tassadar in lane to do lane maintenance. It looks like they really wanna keep these lanes pushed out, keep the map painted red, control vision on the map. Um, vision is an often underrated um, part of this game, and if you know where your enemy is and where they're rotating, it gives you such an advantage in decision making. Big Damn Hero is able to steal Fatal Destiny's Bruiser Camp or Spear Chucking Camp. And now they're trying for their own. Fatal Destiny sniffed it out though, and they are coming in. They're a little late, and they're disjointed. Only three going into five. Tyrael forced to burn the Sanctification and Augusta to try to get Tyrael out of there. There's the Storm Shield, there's the Maelstrom, and the Divine Shield. Absolutely melted. Thrall was absolutely melted by Kerrigan's Maelstrom. Fatal Destiny and full retreat. If they don't get out of here with at least three people, this is going to be... Oh, oh, there's the Living Bomb spread to Falstad. Falstad stayed too long. That's going to be three members of Fatal Destiny down. I expect um, we're going to see Big Damn Heroes get a keep here. Uh, I think that should be the call, and that looks like that's what they're doing. Maybe? They're getting bottom Merc here, while Tassadar and Jan or uh, Kerrigan are kind of sniffing around. Is he going to get the Rhaegar, or sorry, the Rhaegar pick? He does, and now they're going to use the Merc camps to push in on the center keep. Um, big trouble here for Fatal Destiny. They've got really 30 seconds left before their team is up, and 50 seconds left on Rhaegar. The staggered death time is going to be brutal. Um, Big Damn Heroes might try to end here. Their healer isn't anywhere near here, though, but neither is Sylvanas to try to defend. Uh, four members of Big Damn Heroes on the core with Mercs. The shields are down. Sylvanas needs to get over here. Uther was chasing Sylvanas around the map. It happened off screen, but not allowing her to get back to defend. Four now at 50%, only Thrall to defend. There goes the Sundering, and in a desperate fifth events, Tyrael's now here, too. 35%, three members of... Fatal Destiny here to defend the Gust to try to keep them away. 17%. Going to be down to 10 soon. There goes Kerrigan. 9%. I don't think it's going to be enough. Big Damn Heroes picks up the win. They did seem to control the game throughout. It uh, wasn't a blowout by any stretch of the imagination, but they did seem to control the game kind of from cover to cover. Fatal Destiny really was in it, and it was a very, very close game. Um, uh, right until that last team fight where they kind of invaded uh, Big Damn Heroes Merc camp and they did it in a disjointed manner and it allowed three of their members to get picked off um, in the team fight. It was the most decisive team fight of the game um, and it was also um, the one latest in the game. So let's take a look at some stats, see if anything jumps out to us. Um, eight kills on Kael'thas, no deaths. You know, when you have Kerrigan causing so much in your front line, Fatal Destiny was so worried about the Kerrigan dive, they barely looked at Kalthos, I don't think, until the fight broke up. But in, like, regular team 5-on-5s, five he was kind of free to throw out those living bombs. 57,000 damage, 62,000 to go with 8 kills for Kerrigan. Um, Rhaegar's 16,000 kills. You know, this is impressive. 24,000 damage on Uther. That is a lot of damage. Uh, for a healer, um, that's pretty impressive. Uh, that's really impressive, actually. When I play a healer, you know, it's easy to get caught up in um, being a heal bot, but unless you're like a Morales, um, as a healer, you do need to contribute uh, to your team's damage. And in kind of a regular game, when I heal, my kind of self personal goal in an average, you know, 15 to 20 minute game is about 10,000 damage so a uh, hero damage so Rhaegar did really good hero damage <laughs> that 10 that 24,000 on Uther is really good um, let's see if anything jumps out to me um, regarding um, the talents uh, there's a really good video that Cavalier guest did on why follow through is almost always not a talent to take on Tyrael I suggest you check it out um, Thrall's not really my guy so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Falstad went the typical boomerang build. Um, personal, pre this is kind of the prototypical build. We'll see if it changes with the recent nerfs. The one thing I might have considered on objective-based maps where you're going to be auto-attacking a lot if you're in the shrines, I kind of like the basic attack heals you. It gives you a little bit of self-sustain on the shrines. Um, I I don't I almost never take updraft. It's fine. It's I think it's a personal preference. I usually take the shield. Or, um, or the auto attacks. Healing, 
Um, but especially on PVE maps, I tend to take the auto attack ceiling. Uh, Sylvanas. You don't see Fury of the Storm taken too much because she's got other stuff, but it really does clear out waves fast. By the time you know 20 rolls around, wave clear is kind of not as important. Um, I think this would be taken more if it, you had a similar talent further down, but at 20, you're not as concerned about um, wave clear. The, you know, the one time I might consider taking it is when you hit 20, if you have a keep or two down and you're going to be forced to kind of clear those minions, if you can do it quickly and get back with your team, that might be a situation that I could see doing it. Uh, Rhaegar, uh, I think on Rhaegar, if you're going to take Colossal Totem, which is an excellent talent, you really should take the 90% uh, increase slow. They synergize so well together. On this map in particular, though, I prefer the double Lightning Shield because it helps Rhaegar contribute to the Shrine Guardians more. Healing Totem is an excellent talent. I think it's underrated. Um, at 7, I think you want to see a cleanse with all of the lockdown on the other side. Um, you can... You know, when you see Kerrigan dive in, if you're quick enough with it, you can cleanse her target and get your teammate out of trouble. Of course, you're going to go Ancestral. I normally like the shield here. However, because it's a percentage-based talent on the health pool of the target, they didn't really have any big health pool targets to throw that shield down on. So with that in mind and the fact that the team was going to be so, so clumped together around the shrines, Tidal Wave was the pick to go there. Uh, Storm Shield is always good. Um, if you want to see the most mediocre Kael'thas player in the world, watch me play Kael'thas. I'm really terrible with him. Cowboy Kyle did a great job, um, so I'm not going to talk about it because I'm not a, or a Kael'thas guy and it wouldn't be my thing. Um, I am not a... I'm a mediocre Kerrigan player. Once again, I'm going to refer you to Cavalier Guest did a really nice about 5 to 10 minute video on Kerrigan's builds and which talents to take, I highly, highly recommend taking it. Jaylees did a really nice job damage-wise, but when you're building these, and play overall, so it's not a criticize on the play, but when you're building uh, your character's um, talent build, you're looking for synergy within the talent build. Um, and Kael'thas, or Kael'thas, Cavalier Guest, if you haven't watched this stuff, is really informative, and I've learned a lot from it. So I'd highly recommend going onto his YouTube channel or his Twitch stream, and checking out his little video. It's really short, too, and it's really good. On Kerrigan Talents, uh, specifically on um, this level, um, you want the double Q Talents 1 and 4. Uh, Johanna. I haven't played her after the patch. Normally, of course, you're going to go Night Takes Pawn, but the talent doesn't exist anymore, which is too bad, because I think it was one of the coolest named talents in the game. So... He's correct. Regeneration Master synergizes with Laws of Hope really, really well. And because Uther's um, heals are on high cooldown, you want to maximize them. So that's that's a nice synergy there. Um, on this map in particular, I really like Eternal Retaliation. And there's nothing wrong with Laws of Hope. I said this. I think this is a personal preference thing. But Eternal Retaliation allows you to contribute to the Shrine um, Guardians in a way that no other tank really can. She can really really help clear those shrines out fast. Um, now, they didn't need it with Kerrigan and Kael'thas, so they were using Johanna more as a zoning tool. Um, so for this particular comp, um, what Belias did makes a lot of sense, but if there was maybe a slightly different comp without a Tassadar and a Kael'thas and a Kerrigan, where they needed uh, a Johanna to help on the Shrine Guardians, Eternal Retaliation at 4 helps her do that a lot. Uh, Uther, I'm curious Uther's build because I was really impressed with the damage that he did. This is a really interesting build um, and one I haven't seen before. I'm just so impressed with uh, Seven's damage output. Um, I'm still old school when I play Uther, I do pretty much the piano build or the W build depending on the map and, and, the, and the thing, but this is a really interesting build um, and he played a really good Uther. So Tassadar has basically one build and this is it. 
Um, after he gets to 16, Tassadar should be borderline impossible to kill with the double um, E and the heal on the E. It's really good. Uh, good game all around. Uh, was very close until right up at the end. Uh, Big Damn Heroes was able to take the win and improve to 2-0 and on the season. Fatal Destiny falls to one win and one loss. Um, great game to all. I will be back next week, uh, probably Thursday, but I'm not positive. I will tweet it out. Follow me on Twitter if you'd like, at mongoose underscore underscore 22. Um, also follow me on uh, Twitch or on Cheerly. Thanks to everybody who watched. Good game to both teams. And uh, as always, uh, players, when you watch the replay or anybody in the audience, if you have any criticism or suggestions for improvement, that's the only way you get better at doing this. I'm certainly not a professional. I'm just doing it in my free time to have a good time. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't want to do it well. So if you have any suggestions for improvement or things you really like that I do, I'd love to hear that too. Uh, let me know. And to everybody, have a wonderful evening.